Are you sure you want to do this? Ronbu glances up from the notes he's still sifting through. Ears flicked out flat to the sides with an unimpressed look on his face as an answer. And Tuppa holds all his hands up in surrender. Okay, okay. Sorry, I just wanted to double check. Octuple check, you mean. Ronbu reminds him, saccharine sweet. Taps the rest of Les's papers into a single stack and tucks them away in his bag. Eyes running over the slit, thin, towering entrance in front of them. Sections of monolithic stones toppled over by snares of ruby-red vines. Dude, come on. I'm just trying to be considerate. Tebo grumbles, kicking at loose clods of earth with the toe of his boots. His own pack slung across his shoulder. And Ronbu ducks his head, regret and frustration swamping through him, mumbles. Sorry, I'm just... I'm really okay. You don't need to keep checking. I'm fine. I can do this. It's been a few hours now, and Rambu doesn't exactly feel better, but he has certainly felt worse. Mostly feels like he has an entire wad of cotton stuck in his head, making everything muzzy and slow. That's not like him. Usually his mind is quick and sharp and moves too fast for him to keep up with, but it feels unnaturally sedated right now unsure about everything, really. Do you want to be here doing this? Don't know. Never not know. Don't want to go back, though. Also don't want to stay. Don't want your room. Don't want to be anywhere. Want to just stop existing for a moment. Catch your breath. Gravel crunches softly under Tubbo's boots as he walks closer. Angles his head so Rambu can see the little furrow in his brow. Thinking through something. Problem he wants to solve. Good luck, Carrier. I keep asking because I care about you, not because I don't think you can handle it, okay? Sympathy in his eyes now, but how soon until that turns to pity? Russia whispers over his shoulder, voice cold and shivery like high-altitude winds, drapes across him with all the frozen, heavy weight of a lonely night. How long until he looks at you like we all looked at you? Like you're some sad, broken thing. Shade of a person. Little shadow on the wall. Nothing worthwhile in you. And Ronbu swallows hard. Says, Well then trust me when I say I'm okay. Tebo still doesn't look super convinced. What's he thinking? When's he gonna start looking at you different? His poor nutso partner. And Ronbu's tail lashes quick in irritation. Words coming out harsher and angrier than he wants. You always demand I treat you the same, but won't do that for me. Do you think I'm too pathetic or something? Some poor, pitiable thing that needs to be rescued from- No! Stop making shit up! You know I don't think that! Tebo snaps, voice raising in volume like thunderheads building in summer skies. Dark, dangerous look in his eyes as his hands clench, and Rambu tracks the movement heart stuttering and tripping in his chest. Sees the way they swing at him in his memories, skin splitting and hurting, taste of blood in his mouth. But it stops there, Tubbo uncoiling out of the stance he was storming into, relaxing two palms to drag down his face. Breathes in deep and lets it go. Moves his hands to grip the back of his neck. S sorry. I I'm sorry for implying I didn't think you could handle this. I care about you a lot. I just want you to be safe. S so I'm trusting you, okay? To be telling me the truth? He's looking up at Rambu with regret, pulling his mouth down. Concern furrowing his brows. Anger and love and worry all warring in his eyes. Such a complicated mess of things. But Rambu can't judge because he's the same. Only difference, he keeps everything locked away inside hidden behind a never-ending passageway of walls and doors. Thank you for apologizing. I'll let you know if I need anything. Ronbu offers. Really hopes he's not lying. Rocks forwards awkwardly on his toes and hesitantly cups Tubbo's face, fingers trailing back to thumb at the braid he just redid a few hours ago. Sorry for being a bitch. Oh, so you're apologizing for every interaction we've ever had. Tubbo teases lightly, and that's more a comfort than anything. 
that he's still willing to joke around and poke and prod, like he knows Ronbu isn't going to break apart instantly. You should count your blessings you even know me. Rambu adopts a fake, huffy tone, sticking his nose ridiculously high in the air because he knows it'll make Tubbo laugh. Is rewarded with the lovely peals of it not a second later. Continues on. Protest all you like, but I bring such enrichment and fulfillment to your otherwise bland and boring existence. I am a joy to know. Rambu's joking. He is 110% full of shit. Doesn't mean a word. But then Tubbo smiles at him sincerely, stepping way into his personal space, which is the furthest thing from a problem, and reaches up, tapping him lightly on the nose. You're right. You absolutely are a joy. Now come on, Stella Dore, before it gets too dark. Staring after his retreating back, like he's just been given a concussion, Rambu really can't figure out what he's ever done to warrant having Tubbo in his life, as his friend, as his cariad jumps to attention when Tubbo laughingly calls back at him to hurry up, teleports in a blink to his side at the mouth of the temple. Show off. Tubbo grins, elbowing him in the ribs gently, and Rambu snorts, rolling his eyes as they start down a dark, narrow hallway, grayish stone rising high above them. The temple architecture feels like an animal crouched in waiting, all long, reedy shapes like the people that built it, Thin, slitted windows letting in watery light and highlighting strange designs carved into its surface. As they walk down the main corridor, boots scuffing loudly in an oppressively muffled silence, Rambu runs his hand along the carved lines that swirl together tightly like fingerprints, claws tracing through the grooves and dips in the stone. He keeps checking Les's notes as they go, referencing where they are in relation to her clean sketches starts building a mental map of the whole complex. Main chamber should just be down here. He mumbles to himself, eyes squinting at the page as he rotates it to match their surroundings. Whips around frantically when he hears a panicked shout behind him. Tubbo? Uh, I'm okay, just tripped. Tubbo calls, though he seems to be having trouble writing himself, hand flailing around a lot before it finally lands on a wall and Rambu realizes what's wrong the same time as Tubbo says. Shit, it's dark in here, though. Rambu hadn't noticed the loss of light, eyes actually feeling better than they normally do, relaxing in the dim environment. But Melifera don't have night vision, their eyes specifically developed to handle a lot of light. And he asks, softly, You okay? Do you need a flashlight? No, probably, maybe. Tubbo relents, but makes no move to pull one out. And with understanding, Rambu sighs in exasperation. Did you pack one? Maybe? Tubbo drawls, starts blindly digging around in his own pack, pushing past plenty of things that are not a flashlight. Spare clothes, rations, toolkit, medical supplies. Is that an orange? Makes a noise of triumph and holds up a cylindrical-shaped object. Ha! See? I know what I'm doing. Tubbo. Yeah? That's a thermos. Rambu says, desperately trying not to laugh at the way Tubbo brings the thermos as close to his face as he can get. Squints at it, like that's going to help him see better. Really? Well, fuck me, I guess. Rolling his eyes. Doofus, doofus, love him so much. Rambu starts back the way they came. All right, well, come on. Might as well head back now. What? No! Tubbo protests, swings in the correct direction Rambu's in, but fails horribly trying to grab for him. We already- Hey, where are you? Come here. Thank you. Okay, look. We already walked all the way out here. I'll just use my handheld or something. Great, a whole four minutes of battery life. Rambu teases, smiling at Tubbo when he shakes his arm in annoyance, fingers wrapped warm and grounding around his forearm. No, I charged it during the flight, bitch. Fuck off. Mm-hmm. I'll believe it when I see it. Rampu draws, and then squints as a blinding light is suddenly in his face. Tubbo snickering. Oh, what's the matter, boo-boy? Can't see. Well, he can't now. 
but Rambu uses where Tubbo still has a hand wrapped around him to figure out where he is, lunges forward before he has a chance to counter, and mercilessly tickles at his sides. Tubbo shrieks like he's being stabbed, flings his hand held out of his grip, and it goes clattering off somewhere, throwing insane, bouncing shafts of light around the temple. Whatever advantage surprise offered Rambu doesn't last for long. Not much he can do against an extra set of hands. Gets put on the defensive really quickly, trying to keep Tubbo's insistent fingers from his sides, his stomach, anywhere he can reach, really. Rambu's laughing so hard, his chest starts to hurt, muscles aching pleasantly and bones rattling together, and he begs in between rounds of involuntary laughter. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay, truce? Mm, I don't know, Tubbo drawls. Hands stilling in their barrage, but still resting ominously on his sides, flexing against the soft material of the t-shirt under his jacket. What's in it for me? What you got to offer? Nothing. You have nothing. No money, no resources, no connections, no information. Useless and expendable. Comes hissing out from somewhere. Unclear if it's Russia or Maliri. Too indistinct. And Rambu shoves it out an open door. Knows that's not what Tubbo's getting at. He's teasing. He's poking fun. He's treating Rambu like he treats everyone. And Rambu forces his voice to be just as light, not shaky and scared like it wants when he offers. Well, how about I do your laundry for a week? And not have clean laundry for a week? No thanks. Tebo giggles, hands worming a little higher. And it's more comforting than threatening. Has Rambu relaxing, dipping his head down, watches the way his eyes cast dim light across Tubbo's face. Want half my pay for the mission? Nah, don't really need to buy anything. Tubbo hums, and tilts his head back and forth in thought, antenna bobbing with the action, one of them accidentally dragging across Ronbu's nose. And he works on not sneezing, racks his brain, trying to think of something else he can offer Tubbo in exchange. Um, I could clean the room? Or the ship? Uh, sorry, I don't really... What do you want? Tubbo gets this impish grin on his face, dimples appearing in his cheeks as he angles his head back, probably trying to go for cocky. Looks nothing but a little silly, and very lovely to Ronbu, as he says, You're hot. Did he just... And Ronbu's ears shoot up, heat gathering along their tops as they go a dark purple. Same color staining his flushed face, because that was just so stupid and so corny sounding. Like it came right out of those romance books you pray no one ever catches you reading. Oh, ancients, who says shit like that? And Rambu's going to laugh it off. Say something like, you can't have my organs. But he's apparently an idiot. Is thinking about this one scene between two star-crossed caryads he really likes. And ends up saying, Why? You already have it. I cannot believe you just said that. I cannot believe you just said that. A corner of his mind howls. Only rational part left in a sea of writhing embarrassment and turmoil. But before Rambu can even try doing damage control, Tubbo starts laughing. Entire face scrunching up in glee. Queen's past, you're such a dork. He cackles. Eyes cracking back open to stare fondly at the general blob of Ronbu in the darkness. Hands slipping off him as he takes a step back. Oh man, that was good. Alright, come on, help me find my handheld, you cheeseball. Okay. Ronbu says absentmindedly, turning in something of a daze, watching Tubbo stumble off in the dark, looking for his handheld. Screen timed out by now, so he's never going to find it on his own. But Ronbu can't move rooted to the spot staring after him. Likes your stupid attempts at humor. The dumb way you try and woo him. How did you ever end up with someone so incredible? He thinks adoringly, lips twitching up at Tubbo pinwheeling his arms, only spurred into motion once he hooks a foot on something in the dark and falls over with the loudest fuck Rambu's ever heard. Rambu finds the handheld easily enough presses it from his shaking hands into Tubbo's steady ones. And now armed with light, Tubbo follows along a lot more confidently. 
asks Rambu questions here and there as he swings his hand held around to illuminate creepy-looking statues. What's all this for, anyway? He calls, walking around the base of one, staring contemplatively up at its odd face, tries to mimic the pose it's in, and Rambu hums, flipping back through his mental records of the notes. Les thinks it's supposed to have been a... not religious, but spiritual, maybe? But some monastery-like archive. Maybe a temple school of sorts? For training the upcoming archivists. Huh. Is that who this guy is? Tubba points up at the statue, like Rambu might not have seen it. All thirty-something-odd feet of it. Sculpted robes, cracked, and missing chunks, but obviously important-looking. Hands cupped, like maybe they held something at one point. Most likely, Rambu says, wandering out a bit further into the main chamber. Remembers Les saying this was as far as she could get. No entrance or anywhere else to go in sight. Just a vaguely trapezoidal room and eight towering statues. All right, think. No doors, but that doesn't mean anything, especially if this is someplace special. Rambu steps lightly over the ground, tightly patterned groups of lines swirling under his feet. Maybe all the lines mean something. Point the way, or there's a map of sorts? Sound waves, maybe? No, doesn't make sense. Non-auditory. What if... Rambu jumps about a foot in the air when he hears stones grinding unexpectedly, whips around trying to find the source of the noise, catches the barest glimpse of a pillar disappearing back into the ground. Can't figure out what triggered it, but then Tubbo yells, Sorry, did I break anything? Spinning on his heel, Rambu sees Tubbo hovering in the air above the statue he's been pointing at, or, more accurately, hovering over its cupped hands, looking down at them guiltily, and it clicks together in Rambu's head. Tubbo! Stand in its hands again! I didn't touch it! What a- uh, oh, oh yeah, sure. Tubbo calls back, wings dropping him to land in the statue's hands, and they depress the slightest bit, same grating sound accompanying it. And Rambu looks over his shoulder, pleased as the pillar rises up fully out of the ground this time. Stay put just a sec, okay, Bo? Righty out, boss man. Slinking closer to the pillar, Rambu minds where he puts his feet in case of traps but that worry is probably due more to the adventure thrillers he's read, rather than any solid logic. The pillar is triangular, and made up of the same grey stone as everything else, but where Rondu thought maybe it'd have something carved in it, it's just completely blank, all three sides of it. And he makes a few quick circuits, can't find anything either time. Why have this, then? What's the point? Nothing here, why have this? Just a boring stone? But wait. Or not. Les said wake stones store memories, is this one? Rambu stalls in place and regards the pillar. Taller than him, but about the right height for a Bossack to rest their hand on the top. Welp, he murmurs, taking a few steps back so he can get a running start. Jumps and just barely manages to get his fingertips hooked around the top of it. Disappointed when nothing happens, but then... Same room, but a little different. Carvings in the floor glowing a warm red. Bosek standing in front of him with an impressive crest of feathered spines. Deep, rich color to their robes. And they don't hold out a hand, but Rambu can hear them all the same. Voice echoing louder than time, quieter than space, as they say. When you look, when you look into, into my, my face, face, I shall never, I shall never lie. lie. Instead, Instead, be but a window into your soul whether their light or shadows hide. As in me, many see their deaths where others see their lives. For though prejudiced to some I may seem, the truth is in their own eyes. And around him the room wobbles, only stopping when their words do. And they wait patiently, watching him with razor-thin eyes. Can't figure out what they want. But then it's tipping over in his head that they want an answer. It's a riddle. This is a test. And Rambu runs back through it, imagines the words in front of him, and they appear, wavering in the air. He combs through them, fingers touching at the silvery outlines of the letters, weighing options in his head, but there's only one thing it could really be. Looking into the heart of things, 
that never lies to you reflects back yourself so painfully accurate. And he looks up at the Bossack archivist, squares his shoulders, and answers them. The answer is, the answer is a mirror. Next thing Rambu knows, he's falling backwards out of the air, with Tubbo shouting his name in alarm. Brain, very disoriented, and unable to find any coordinates for him before he hits the ground hard. The impact knocks all the air out of him. But it's a feeling he's used to. Body rolling itself up on autopilot. His legs bunch under him in preparation to launch himself across the training mat at Dream, but halts because there's no one there. And Rambu bends over a little, wheezing air back into his lungs. Rambu! Tubbo shouts again over the sound of more stone grinding together, rapid whirring a second later that cuts out with a scuffed thud heralding his arrival. Two sets of hands immediately on Rambu trying to steady him. Fuck, are you okay? What happened? Are you hurt? Fine, I'm fine. Rambu huffs, head swimming, spine just starting to protest at the abuse, but he shuts it out, staggers to his feet and grins, seeing the towering black slit now open along the far wall, pride glowing warm and bright in his chest as he points at it. Look, did it. Gaining access to the rest of the temple is easier now that they know what to look for. Some sort of physical puzzle that opens up another wake stone, which generally has a riddle or philosophical quandary stored inside. And they all require a lot of thinking and working through things, and Rambu starts loving every second of it. He drops to the ground lightly after the latest riddle. Hasn't been hung up on any of them so far. Tail curling behind him, self-satisfied, as another passageway opens up. Turns to grin at Tubbo, and boasts. I'm smart. And for once, he actually means it. Proud of himself and the way his mind works. Basks in the feeling, like a cat stretching in a warm patch of sunlight. Did it. Did it. Figured it out. Smart. Capable. Quick on your feet. Love the way you work. Love that you're mine. Rambu can't stop the urge to wrap his arms around himself. And not in a frantic, crushing way, but rather something almost like a hug. Excited, contented feeling ruffling up from his feet, tail whipping behind him happily. Only seems like a dumb thing to do after it's passed. He catches Tubbo staring, and ducks his head, embarrassed. But Tubbo smiles softly, right arms pulling him into a quick hug, rests his head along Rambu's side, and looks up at him adoringly. Yeah, you are smart. Proud of you, Boo. Proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of you. Follows along after his heels, like a cloud of those glowing insects on Apidae. Firebugs. Ethereal and beautiful and suffused with light. And it takes some prompting from Tubbo before Rambu can even have a brain to try and figure out this next room. This one immediately sticks out as strange to him smaller than the others, with no statues or anything in sight. Just four walls that disappear up into the gloom. Rambu makes his way hesitantly into the center, does a quick spin, but nope, nothing new. Just Tubbo poking along one wall with his hand held up above his head, throwing crazy shadows along the carved stone. Weird. Why the abrupt change? Rambu wonders, tail swishing behind him in thought. Distracted when Tubbo calls. Think this is it? Like, are we at the end and the magical stone is just gone? Ha! Huh. Maybe the real magic stone were the friends we made along the way. I don't think so. Rambu mutters, ignoring as Tubbo makes a sound of disappointment and swings his hand held around, light catching strangely on the back wall, and Rambu's eyes narrow, heading over to get a better look. As soon as he's closer, he can see what the difference is. This wall smooth and polished, almost like the surface of a mirror, reflecting back a blurry outline of himself, mismatched eyes glowing in the black shadow of his face. Find something? Tebo asks behind him, and Rambu flicks his tail, unsure, one hand stretching out because he has an idea. All the other wake stones were freestanding pillars, but they were the only smoothed things in there. Maybe this is just a huge one. So no, maybe. 
Rambu calls. Hears the crunch of boots coming closer right as his fingertips make contact. Palm flattening out to rest on the glassy surface, and everything's suddenly gone. Feels like a hole's opened up underneath him, and he's falling, falling, falling. Rambu stumbles on his feet, heart jackhammering in his chest with leftover adrenaline, vertigo making him sick to his stomach and lightheaded. Works on taking even breaths as he stares at the glossy black floors. Floors and tiling patterns he'd recognize anywhere. Head snapping up in panic because no, 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 it's not. He's not. But the towering ceilings of Voidfall greet him. Sharp lines of geometric pillars and eerie teal light flooded everywhere. Gold winking in the gloom like the flash of eyes watching his every step. And Rambu jerks back. Doesn't know how he got here. Needs to get out of here right now. But when he turns around, the hallway's gone, and he's standing alone in the throne room. No, 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 no. He thinks, this isn't happening. This isn't real. But everything seems so real. The feel of the air, the drumming pulse in his veins. And between one blink and the next, there's two figures before him. One standing up on the dais with his back turned, teal cloak falling to his feet. Heavy bands of the daysetter crown curled around silver-streaked hair, and Rambu's heart lurches. Not him, not him, not him. Swings his gaze to the other and feels the blood freeze in his veins because he knows it, knows it like he knows his reflection. Tiny frame of his shoulders, tail held stiffly but quivering slightly, Hands wound up tight behind his back, claws already worrying its skin, little ears pressed as close to his skull as they can get, everything about him small and alone and so very painfully afraid. And Rambu swallows harshly, whips his gaze back up when the figure at the front of the room speaks. Do you have, you have any, any idea, idea what, what you've done? done. How, this, how will this will play out? out. How, how it will look, look for me, for, me, for the, the rest of us? Of us. Or, do or do you only care, care about yourself? yourself. I'm sorry. Both Ronbu and his smaller copy plead, guilt crawling up his spine like a thing possessed. I didn't mean to. It was an accident. You're lying. They both cringe, ducking away from the vile words thrown at them, the figure at the front cutting a hand sharply through the air. That's all you do. Lie and deceive and lead people astray. You're a cursed thing. Unfit, unfit to be to here. Unfit, unfit to be called, be called my son. son. No, 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 please. please. I, I can, can be good. good. I, I will, will be good. good. They beg, but it's futile. Father doesn't want to hear it. Bulls over there, please. You are an embarrassment and have disappointed me for the last time. You'll never be anything more than a black mark in the ledger of this family. Rambu chokes back the horrible sound he wants to make. Shoulders shaking with the force of trying to hold himself still. Knows he can behave. He can behave. He's trying. Father, look at me. Look at me. But he won't. Doesn't move a muscle as he intones. From the day you were born, I regretted your existence. And you've done nothing since then to prove me wrong. Nothing you have done has ever been worthy of your life. You will never be worthy. The smaller him collapses to his knees, sobbing. But Rambu stays upright, bows his head and digs furious claws into his arms because he knows, okay? He knows, he knows, he knows, and he tried to get rid of himself once, but it failed. He failed. But that's all he does, isn't it? Can't do anything right. Can't be a good son, can't be a decent person, can't find a purpose, can't even kill himself. You disgust, you disgust me. me. Father's voice berates. Try, Try all you all like you to outrun, outrun this, but it's going to follow you for the rest of your life. life. You're never, never escaping, escaping, and why, why should you? Should you? you? You deserve to live with this guilt, guilt until it consumes, consumes you. you. And the sobbing suddenly changes in pitch, becoming something Rambu recognizes like a nightmare, like a slow death. Head snapping up in horror to see Tubbo knelt on the ground, hands shackled behind him. No, 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 no. Rambu whispers, watching the syndicate bomber melt off his back, replaced with the muddy green of a prison jumpsuit, frantic pain snarling up his insides as father says, 
You get up and lie to yourself every day. Say your mistakes don't define you, that it's okay because you regret? Well, it isn't. It never will be. You're a monster and a criminal. And you don't deserve to be here. You don't deserve to be alive. Tebow hangs his head, back heaving from the force of his tears, looking so defeated and so downtrodden. No spark or fight left in him at all, like he's accepted this. Like he's giving up. And Rambu twitches violently, screaming at his father. Shut up! Leave him alone! You don't know fucking anything! But either they can't hear him, or don't care. And Rambu howls like a wounded animal, but it isn't enough to drown out father's voice. Can't be surprised how it went the way it did. It wasn't even your idea, was it? Just a simple little drone following orders till the end, hmm? A good worker bee that knows his place, doesn't think above his station. Shut up! Just shut the fuck up! Rambu shrieks, trying to lunge forward, but he's rooted to the spot. Can't seem to make his body work, and he thrashes violently, throne room pulsating around him in time to the frantic beating of his heart. Mindless thing. You're one of millions, you know that? Father asks softly, like he's speaking to a child. Someone smaller than him, not as smart, not as strong, like he's lesser. If you died, no one would notice. Another would simply step up, and that'd be the end of that. You're no one. A dirty little nobody going nowhere. Stop it! Leave him alone! Rambu yells, body unresponsive, mind burning, desperate, frantic, furious need to move, to get across the room, to shut him up, to kill him. That's why everyone leaves you. That's why no one really loves you. You're forgettable, and replaceable, and worth nothing in the end. It wouldn't be worth the money it'd take to bury you. You fucker! I said leave him alone! So why bother staying here? No one wants you. Everyone would be better off without you, and you know it. You could finally do something right in your sad, pathetic excuse of a life by ending it. Rambu screams gutturally, finally rips his frozen feet off the floor and goes streaking across the throne room, wind roaring in his ears, and terrible anger destroying him from the inside out like a thousand horrid, clawed things are trying to scratch their way out of his chest, breaking free to rip the man in front of him to shreds. Hurt him, hurt him, hurt him! Howls in his mind like a fatal sandstorm, crashes under his skin like war drums because how dare he, how dare anyone say those things to Tubbo, to look at him and see anything less than what he is, belittle and demean and disgrace such a proud, caring, wonderful person and all that anger is about to come frothing out of him, spilling free like toxic gas from fumaroles in the Earth's surface. Ronbu launches himself up the dais, latches his claws into his father's shoulder, and spins him around. Other fists cocked back and shooting straight towards his face, aiming to break his nose, knock out his teeth, hurt him, wound him, maim him, but comes grinding to a stop. Arm trembling with the effort taking to hold himself still, Fury that's been bubbling inside, washing over him like a vile, cresting wave, because that's not his father. It's him. It's his face. His nose. His mouth. His mismatched eyes, all staring back at Rambu placidly, like he doesn't have a care in the world. Like he hasn't been standing here, ripping Tebo to shreds. Taking him out at the knees, dismantling him like only Rambu knows how to do. And he staggers back. Panic flaring, sharp in his chest. Feels like his bones are collapsing inwards. W what? He stammers, staring at this copy of himself, this reflection of himself. Vision starting to shake because no, 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 this isn't him. He wouldn't. He would never. But you did. The other corrects, sweeping down off the dais like dark clouds moving to blot out the sun. Gold dripping from his ears and capping his horn. Daysetter crown heavy on his brow, but he holds his chin high like he's proud of this. Don't you remember? You looked him dead in the eyes and reminded him of how worthless he is. Dug your claws in and pulled at his seams. Unraveled him because that's what he deserves. Shut up! Rambu screams, hands coming up to clutch at his head because this isn't real. This isn't, can't be! He loves Tubbo. Tubbo loves him. He'd never hurt him, never say these things to him, and 
Okay, maybe he did once, but he's better. He won't ever again. Are you sure about that? Whispers slow and silky, and Rambu digs his claws in harsher, wants to wake up, wants to get the fuck out of here. This isn't real. You've seen it yourself, how quickly you backslide, how easily you go back to your old ways. Don't you remember why that is? No, stop, go away. You do it so much, maybe it's not actually backsliding. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up! Maybe it's just who you really are. His voice is getting closer, echoing less. Sounds like it isn't being spoken aloud, but rather clamoring in his mind like it's inside him, like it is him. You've said it before. Corrupted fruit doesn't fall far from... Leave me alone. Leave me al- 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 Rambu tries to scream, but his voice won't work, fading out because it's not his. His voice is speaking across the room, inside his head, knew the truth, know the truth, always known. And he bears his fangs in a desperate wail, sinking to his knees, everything around him whispering, you know at your core who you are. Go away, go away. A liar. Stop it, that's not, I, I'm not a manipulator. No, 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 ancients, stop, no. An abuser. Rambu howls, spinning to his feet, claws lashing out, aiming for eyes, for jugulars, for anything he can tear into. To stop this, to get rid of it, to kill the thing that spoke aloud the words that have been haunting him since the beginning, since his birth. But they rip through empty air. Nothing here but himself and the smooth, polished surface of a mirror, reflecting back the image of him in his father's clothes. No, my clothes. My clothes. My clothes! Rambu realizes in mounting dread, panic and desperation squeezing him like a vice threatening to crush him out of existence because he's them. He became them. He was always them. He can't be. Won't. No, 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 no! brings his claws crashing down into his arm and tears a massive, weeping line open, blood pouring out in thick rivulets, making his claws slip as he slashes through his other arm. He can't see it as his blood splashes onto the floor, blends into the glossy black tiles, but he tore deep, and it's a lot. And his head starts to feel light pretty quickly, body losing sensations as he stumbles to his knees, falling forwards and straight through the floor, disappearing down into an endless black void, tumbling through nothingness, with freefall twisting his gut. Distantly hopes he hits the ground soon, closes his eyes and... Lurches upright, gasping for air, body shaking like a leaf from blood loss and soon, soon, soon. But when he feels at his arms, there's no blood, and Rambu looks down in a daze, chest crumpling under the force of still being here, of still breathing. Presses his thumb in harshly to the smooth underside of his wrist and doesn't understand. Hey, you okay? Rambu jerks his head up sloppily, stares into a smiling face but can only see his head bowed in grief. Defeated set to his shoulders, you put that there. You did that to him. Hurt him. Made him feel worthless. Your caryad. Your sunshine. And you begged him to kill himself. And Bile races up his throat as Tubbo laughs. Finally got stumped, huh? Nothing open this time, so what the fuck? Tabo launches himself up as Rambu pitches to the side and vomits, sobbing as he does it. You're an abuser. You're an abuser. You're an abuser. Rolling in his head like a mad, distorted echo. But it cements itself into his bone marrow, settling in and making a home like it's something he's always known. Like it's his heritage. Like it's inevitable. Lesson three. You do not belong to yourself, and neither did she. Rambu's never seen Voidfall this swept up in something before. Hides in the shadow of a pillar and stares out at the chaotic stream of servants rushing past. Has to readjust the circlet that keeps slipping down his forehead. Can't wait until he gets his proper one in the next two years. The palace has been tenser than usual, with the wedding looming on the horizon. But now that the day's here... It's all exploded. Everyone's scurrying around like when you kick an endermite nest out in the wastes. 
Heads of the household get short with their staff, lose all sense of decorum without the nobility around to keep them in check, toss their hands about and rail on, and so far, there's been six servants sent home for the day, another eighteen driven to crying, and Rambu tracks all of it with interest. So that one with the crooked nose has favor with the head of house care. From tone of voice and lingering looks, it's not just for being good at their job. No braids in their hair, but can the peasants really afford beads anyway? Rambu thinks, tail curling behind him as he peers out around the side of the pillar, eyes eagerly taking everything in, mind more than happy storing all the new information for him. It may seem trivial, but nothing in Voidfall ever is. A complicated dance Rambu's been tirelessly learning, knows that the goings-on of the mice that scuttle back and forth behind the walls is just as important as the nobility that laugh and scheme out on the dance floor. Feet come scuffing down the hall fast, and Rambu ducks out of view, ear flicking at the hushed conversation that rushes past, only catches a snippet of it. Don't know what to do. It's worse than usual. She's completely out of it. They're gone before Rambu can hear any more, and since no one can see him, he pouts, ears flicked out flat in irritation because that sounds interesting. What to do? What to do? Want to know more? Follow after them? Bad idea. Too obvious. Go the way they came. No, too many possibilities. He taps his fingers together and apart while he thinks. Sees two maidservants come out of an adjoining hallway with concerned sets to their faces. Heads bent together while they gossip and gets an idea. Standing up straight, Rambu neatens his clothes and irritatedly pushes the stupid, improperly fitting juvenile circlet back up. Steps out from behind the pillar and walks with purpose towards the two maidservants. Fixes his face in a mask of concern when he goes up to them. Excuse me? He asks softly. Worried lilt, he adds to his voice to maybe draw on their sympathies. Almost loses it, though, when they don't acknowledge him right away. And he has to raise his voice. Excuse me? Uh, oh, your highness, we were just... One of them starts, but Rambu cuts over her like he's very harried, burdened with distress about the situation. No, no, it's all right. I know how worried everyone must be. I heard it was worse than usual today. Rambu hopes his idea works, that playing along will get him somewhere, but if not, he's already got a backup story that'll cover his tracks nicely. Heard how mean the heads are being, poor peasants, boo-hoo. That sort of thing. But he thinks he's hit on something when the girls whip to look at one another. You know about that? The one with the headscarf whispers. Bingo. And Rambu works on not grinning in victory as he nods his head. Hands clasped in front of him like he's very distraught over the whole thing. Of course, it's a very distressing matter. And please, keep this between us. But I am ever so worried. I heard she was completely out of it, and I just wanted to make sure she was okay. Please, do you know anything? The two of them look at each other quickly, seem to have some kind of silent discussion, but Headscarf turns back to him and relents. M Mistress is a little overwhelmed with the day's activities, is all. Ancients of the Deep, he's her brother, just... The other rudely cuts in with, and Rambu immediately dislikes her. But then he registers what she said. Her brother? Me. She means me. It's one of my sisters. And he stands bolt upright as the girl continues... Please, your highness, but the heiress is having difficulties today. Is there anything you could do, or... Resha. She's talking about Resha. Rambu realizes, stunned. Actual worry starting to bubble up, because that's his sister. He cares for her, but she picks on you. But it's deserved. Is it, though? She's my sister. She's family. Care for her. But does she care for you? Ugh, go away. Knows the fear is leaking out into his voice as he stammers. What's wrong with her? It's just a bad day, your highness, Headscarf says, cutting her eyes away when he turns to look at her frantically. Stop it. Look at me. Stop it. Pay attention. This is important. This is about Russia. What does she mean, bad days? Russia is perfect. Always the best. Always on top of things. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's happened? Is she sick? Is it like Mama? And Rambu's heart jumps painfully. Fear snarling up his insides, thinking about Resha wasting away in a bed with a dozen machines hooked up to her. 
but he can help. Read every book in the palace library on medicine. He can help. He can help this time. Darts forward and practically begs the maidservant to tell him where she is. No one bothers him on the way to Resh's quarters, situated farther up in the family block than his own, as befitting her title. But when he gets closer to her room, Rambu does notice servants watching him out of the corners of their eyes, slows his pace, and purposefully walks past her door, eyes narrowing, seeing them all tense, and then unwind. Don't want me in there. Would stop me if I tried. What are they hiding? Could order them, but then they might get father and don't want to upset him. Don't want him involved. Rambu thinks, disappearing around the corner, mind already pulling up his internal map of Voidfall, the relative coordinates, does quick mental math and darts behind a pillar right as he winks out of existence, stepping smoothly out into the center of a dimly lit room. Rambu hasn't been in any of his siblings' rooms much, least of all Resha's, but he's fairly sure it doesn't usually look like this. Clothes flung all over the place, furniture upturned and in disarray, papers scattered around, and when he takes a cautious step forwards, broken glass crunches under his boots. By the ancients, what happened? Assassins? Thieves? Kidnappers? Terrorists? No, no, palace guards would know. It's okay. She's okay. Rambu tries to calm himself and swallows the panic down, voice shaking as he hesitantly calls out, Russia? There's a soft noise, and his ears flick. Over there, the bed. Sees in his mind, mother fading away. Machines plugged into her arms, only barely keeping her alive. And rushes over. Fingers working themselves into knots at the sight of Russia splayed out. Normally tidy hair, half swallowing her face in a monstrous tangle. Russia? He calls again shifting nervously at her bedside, eyes fixed on the way her chest shallowly rises and falls. Just like Mama, struggling to breathe, is she gonna die? Are you gonna watch the light fade out of her eyes, too? Whimpers in the back of his throat, and reaches a shaky hand out, tugging lightly on her arm. Honored sister, Resha, R Resha, Resh. That gets her to respond, and she groans body moving sluggishly on the bed, head rolling to the side, and from in between snarls of black hair, a glowing green eye creaks open. Oh, great, Resha says, voice slow and syrupy, unlike anything Rambu's ever heard, and he drops her arm fast, folds his hands behind his back as her eye narrows. If it isn't baby, little baby, Golden boy himself. What do you want? Can't you see I'm busy? S sorry for waking you. I, I just... I, 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 uh, I, I, um, ah, uh, shut up. Ancients, your voice is just the worst. Resha snaps, rolling to sit up, head hanging low between her shoulders as she sways a bit erratically, glaring at Rambu from under a mass of tangled hair. Every time you open that stupid mouth of yours, it makes my head ache. Learn to shut up, and then maybe I'll like you more. Sorry, Rambu whispers, all he trusts himself to say evenly, and drops his eyes to stare at the toes of his boots as Resha scoffs, her voice pitching up to mimic his. S sorry, S -s sorry, ancients, that's all you ever say. Sorry, 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 like a little broken recording skipping its track. But it fits, doesn't it? It's you, isn't it? A sad, broken little thing. Resha giggles. Quick rustling that has Rambu lifting his head. Sees her trying to get up, but she must not be feeling well. Tipping to the side, unbalanced. And he rushes forward to try and steady her. Suddenly reels backwards at the sharp crack of a palm striking his cheek. Don't touch me! Resha shrieks, hand raised threateningly like she's going to do it again. And Rambu's quick to back up, one hand clutched against his burning face as Resha stumbles out of bed, hits her nightstand, and knocks an entire slew of small, rattling plastic bottles onto the floor. D don't don't you ever touch me! Don't you- and, and stop! 
Stop looking at me like that. Her eyes... How do you... It's... I, I said stop it! Rambu breaks eye contact quickly, sniffing loudly because he doesn't know what he's done wrong. He was just worried about her, so why did she hit him? It hurts. She's his sister. She's supposed to care about him. Then why did she hit him? It hurts. Why? 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 He cares about her? Why? Cries quietly to her feet. S sorry. S sorry. Sorry. Her inarticulate noise of anger drowns out his apologies. And Rambu flinches when there's a hand yanking him around roughly, arm like a vice over his shoulders as Russia drags him to a corner of her room, positions him forcefully in front of a giant mirror that has a spiderweb of cracks running through it, pieces of it breaking under his boots as she jostles him. There. There we go, little broken recording. Russia hisses, looming over him with her hands braced on his shoulders, keeping him in place. Won't let him go, claws digging in sharply. There we go. Let's take a look. Look, shall we? Hmm? Hmm? Does that sound nice? Stick you in front of here and point out all your flaws? I... I... Rambu stammers. Has no idea what's happening. Why Resh is acting like this. Stares in abject fear as she sways back and forth. Pupils blown wide and unseeing in her eyes as she grins at him. Oh, there he goes again, little broken record. Little horrible broken thing. No one wanted you, you know. Last of eight, of course they didn't want you. You were a mistake, little brother. All the moisture leaves his mouth in an instant. Heart starting to pound fast and loud in his veins. But that can't be true. It can't. Mama always said... But Russia laughs, takes a hand and grips his chin harshly, drags his head back to the mirror forces him to make eye contact with his reflection. Now, she coos, other hand coming up to rake hair out of his face, displacing the ill-fitting circlet with her harsh menstruations. Now, where to begin? Oh, I know, easy spot, so, so easy. This right here. Ha! <laughs> Staring you right in the eyes, isn't it? Her claw comes dangerously close to poking him in his left eye and Rambu flinches back, tail whipping behind him as Resha cackles, claws around his chin, digging in dangerously as she jerks his head back. Now, now, Ran. No need to run, no need to hide. Everyone can see it, you know. How wrong you are. And it's right here. Right in this horrid little eye of yours. Nasty, ugly thing, aren't you? Rambu stares at his reflection. Never really thought that much about it before, but as Russia keeps going, your ears are too big, nose doesn't sit right in your face, teeth crooked, one fang bent at an angle, horns pitting in weird places. He starts to feel ashamed. Gross, writhing feeling in his gut as he stares into his own eyes, the correct one and the horrid, wrong, nasty, ugly one. Is there something wrong with him? Has to be. Why is he like this? What's wrong with him? You're repulsive, ha. Huh. No one cares about you. No one's ever going to, to love you. How could they? Resha laughs, hands smoothing down his face to rest threateningly on the sides of his neck. Bends over and rests her head against his, whispering, scratchy, and angry against his ear. Bet they'd let you marry whoever you want. Give you his fucking blessing. Already got her bead. He yelps in pain as her fingers tighten out of nowhere, claws breaking through his skin in a few places. Forces himself quiet when she shakes him roughly, voice pitching up sharply. Shut up! I don't want to hear it! You stupid fucking little golden boy! Mommy's favorite? Why? 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 Why were you her favorite? How? You can't talk? You're an idiot? Can't do anything? You're just the worst. Rambu doesn't expect her to shove him. Goes tripping to the ground and cries out as his hands slam harshly into the floor. Turns a trembling palm over and panics, seeing black blood oozing out. Dangerous shine of pieces of glass embedded in his skin. Whips his head up as he hears Resha scream. You're worth nothing! You never have been! D do you hear me, little shit? 
No one cares about you. None of them do. He scrambles away from her, hot sting of more glass cutting into his hands. And Resha stumbles after him, barefoot, hands slicing through the air erratically, hair flying around while she rears her head. What makes you so special? Why do you get everything I want? You're absolutely worthless. But you t took everything from me. Nobody wants you. They never have. Th that's not true. Mama wanted me. Rambu screams back at her. Bleeding hands clutch to his front where he's pinned, burning pain throbbing out of them, combining with the constricting agony in his chest. Makes each inhale hurt as he wails. She did. She told me. I, I know she did. What would you ever know about her? Resha yells, foot lashing out at him, but she stumbles. Goes crashing to the ground, and it gives time for Ronbu to scramble away, sobbing as she shrieks. You fucking killed her! Ronbu howls. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He didn't. No, no, no. Wants to get out of here. Needs to get out of here. Has to get out. Get away from her. Is forcing his way through reality without any thought. Comes tripping out of his jump and slams into a wall. Reality reeling around him as he flees down the hall. His lungs scream for air as he races through teal-lit corridors. Sobs bubbling up out of his throat like noxious gases out of the waste. Lightheaded and delirious to the point none of this feels real. Because she's wrong. He didn't. He never did. It wasn't him. It wasn't him. He didn't kill her. He, he didn't. He couldn't. No, 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 no. Horrid thing. Killed her. You killed her. It was you. It was all your fault. Hisses in his mind. Sharp bite of claws at his shoulder. And Rambu squeezes his eyes shut. Frantic to get away from there. But it's like it's gone with him. The memory of Russia hanging off him like a nightmare he can't wake up from. Wails, hearing her murmur. Good. You deserve this. Never forget that, you little mistake. And he never does. Time slows to a crawl. Huge stretches of crackling gray static, spacing out brief blinks of black nothingness where everything's finally quiet. Where he can forget he exists. Where he can pretend he's dead. Those fleeting moments of unconsciousness are the only things keeping him moving. Reality pushing him to the brink every agonizing second it drags on. But then fatigue will finally yank him under before he takes that step over the side. Smother everything so he forgets, briefly, when he wakes up, that he doesn't want to be here anymore. Coming out of sleep is the best time of the day. A few short minutes of blissful confusion that always get destroyed as everything else comes roaring back in tearing at his insides, ripping his veins to shreds, splintering his sense of self to the point that Rambu loses the idea of where he begins and where nothing ends. Starts to think they're one and the same. He's been awake for... he doesn't know how long, actually. But that hazy feeling has long faded, and he's been staring blankly at the gray wall by his bunkside. Losing seconds, hours, years, maybe to the sinking, dragging pit in the center of his being. Breathing hurts. Blinking hurts. Living hurts. The thought of getting up impossible. Only thing that sounds halfway appealing is the comfort sleep brings. The desperation at knowing the relief of death would be better, but he'd have to get up and can't. The bed behind him dips as a body shuffles in discomfort protesting at being still for so long, but he refuses to leave, forces himself to stay. Why do you do this to people? Why do you always hurt them? Just end it. Get it over with. Two arms tightening around his waist, and it should feel nice, be warm and comforting and grounding, but Rambu can't feel anything. Will you try to get up today? Hushes into the back of his neck, tip of a nose pressed into his hairline, and the amount of anguish in this voice. The sadness and the fear and the pain you put that there, you hurt him. Makes Rambu clamp his eyes shut, desperate to be rid of it. It doesn't have to be much, okay? Just 
sit up, watch a movie with me? The silence drags on, distorting and warping at the edges, curling inwards like reality bending around a black hole, crushing everything out of existence. Wish it'd get you so tired. Don't want to do this. Be here. Can't take one more day. One more second. And a shaky exhale ruffles his hair. Faint burn from the tears that roll down onto his skin. Fuck. Please, Boo. Please. I love you. I want to help you, but I don't know what to do. Let me die. Swirls in his head, like curls of sand out in the wastes. Tiny, sharp little particles of it that stick to everything. Get grit in your eyes, under your claws. Forget me. Move on. Take that braid out of your hair and just let me go. Painful, cutting edges that you can never get rid of. Always find them clinging to something else. Stop loving me. Whatever you see in me is a sham. Nothing's ever been here. You're deluded. I love you. There's tears in his voice, tripping it up. Trailing down his face. Burn where they strike Ronbu's neck. Red hot tip of a thermal knife, but this time you lean into it. Begging them to cut a little higher, a little deeper. End me, you cowards, you scream at them. You queen's past. I, I love you so much. Please be okay. I love you. Stay, please, queens, please. P promise you'll stay. He can't. He can't. He can't. Not a promise he can make. And at his continued refusal to voice anything, a hand carefully grabs at his, is gentle moving around his taped-up, busted-open knuckles. But Rambu can feel the way Tubbo's fingers shake as he laces them together how he curls his head down behind him, doesn't bother stifling the quiet sobs that slip free. Tebo cries a lot now, is always thumbing at his eyes or dragging palms down his face, rubs his skin raw as he stares after him like he's seeing a ghost, crawls into bed behind Ronbu and shakes with silent tears, hangs on so tight it's almost like he's convinced that if he doesn't, Ronbu's going to vanish. He's not wrong. You're so close. Just a few more steps and that's it. Resha croons, sharp tips of her claws carting through his hair, fiddling with the braid that's almost come completely undone. Have you made any plans? You have to know it's rude to keep us waiting, little brother. Not yet. I'm tired. Rambu whispers, sinking back into her touch. I'll get to it later and Resha gives a sharp tug on his braid, noxious floral of her perfume rising over him like a tide. Don't take too long. I know you're self-centered, but try and think about others for once. The burden you are to them? Get it over with. I know. I know. I'm trying. But Rambu feels like his body is made of lead. A neutron star in mortal form. The mere thought of getting up, so exhausting. He's on the verge of sleep again, clawing towards it viciously so he can finally escape being aware of himself. He's almost there, pieces and parts dissolving into the black void, spiraling head over tail down through leaving nothingness, forgetting about the bed under him, the arms around him, soft crying at his back and tears of fire burning through his shirt is, unfortunately, jolted back to reality by an insistent thudding noise. Tubbo drags his dead weight closer for a second, static clouding Rambu's ears so he doesn't hear what he says, rather feels the words pressed into his skin before Tubbo gets up. Love you. Please stay. Please hang on. Love you so much. But then he's gone, leaving a gaping hole behind Rambu that he wishes wasn't there. Curling into himself tighter, Ronbu barely catches the quiet swish of something opening and closing. Muffled voices, another round of the door letting someone out, and then the bed's dipping at his back again, but less like the weight of someone crawling in, just resting against it. Hey. Hey. You any good at making cookies? 
The absurdity of the question, combined with whose voice it is, is enough to move Ronbu to look over his shoulder, squinting in confusion because, yeah, that's definitely dream. Arms folded on the mattress where he crouches next to the bunk. Well? Dream asks, round head tipping to the side in question, voice light and airy as he prods. Are you or not? Because I could really use some help. What the hell? What the fuck? Why does he care? What's happening? Go away. I don't want to deal with this. With you. And Rambu shakes his head no. Tired and confused and bewildered. Just wants Dream to go. But the shifter shrugs his shoulders. Holds a hand up apologetically. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Could you say that again? Fucker. Know what he wants. What game he's playing. Rambu hangs his head. Let's his hair fall across his face and hides the grimace he makes. Arm starting to twinge where it's propping him up. Easier to just give him what he wants and he'll go. Leave you alone to your void. Give in. No use fighting. And he clears his throat, hoarsely snapping. No, I don't. Great! So we can learn together then. Come on. Dream announces far too chipperly. And Rambu jerks his head up glaring at the hand being held out in his direction. Go away. Leave me alone. What's the point? Interacting with a corpse. A shell of a thing. Nothing inside but depthless dark. Lips rolling back, baring his fangs. Fully intends to flop back over and ignore him, because getting up sounds miserable, but... Dream isn't going to let this go. Rambu knows him. Knows he's not going to leave. Except defeat until he gets what he wants. And the longer Ronbu puts that off, the longer he's going to have to deal with people in his room, in his face, in his head, in his life. And he sighs in defeat, swinging around, and gives Dream his hand. The contact cracks through him, zaps down his nerves and tingles in his chest, like someone's just pressed defibrillator pads to his sternum. And it hurts but not as bad as his arm when Dream hauls him up. The tension pulling his skin tight, putting too much stress on half-heeled cuts. Ronbu sways once he's on his feet, has to throw a hand out to right himself, black spots swimming in his vision, and glares at Dream from under hooded eyelids as the other says, See? Not too bad. Now come on, cookies don't make themselves. Stumbling through the disaster that used to call itself their room, Rambu has to make the conscious effort to move his legs, remind his joints they're supposed to bend and not lock up like they're crippled by rigor mortis, everything aching like he's had the shit kicked out of him. You did, though. Don't you remember? That mission, that bar, those assholes, sharp, biting taste of blood in your mouth. And Rambu flexes his fingers, Knuckles protesting as he clenches them into fists, spits back at the voice viciously. It wasn't my blood. He doesn't grab anything before they leave. Couldn't find it anyway. When's the last time he got up? When's the last time he looked? When's the last time he cared? Shuffles out into the hallway in sleep pants and a long-sleeved shirt, feet bare and quiet following after Dream, hair hanging down in a tangled mess. Cannot believe you left the room looking like that. Disgusting disgrace, absolute shame to your family, your title. Maliri snaps, wavering in between him and where Dream is up ahead. And Rambu rolls his eyes hard, clacks his teeth at her, and mocks. Absolute shame to your family? Yeah, I fucking know. But who the fuck cares? I'm dead anyway. Calm your fucking tits. Maliri's face contorts like he's never seen before, blistering rage and seething indignation pulling her usual stoic features into gross caricatures of emotion, entire form wavering sharply as she yells, The nerve! Never taught you to speak like that! Never should have taught you to speak at all. Is it him? Is it that degenerate that's warped you? No good criminal, vile thing, absolutely disreputable, I say that about him again and I rip your throat out with my teeth. Rambu hisses under his breath, takes a few quick steps and blows right through her, claws flexing out at his sides, looking to snag into parts of her dress, 
tear into her skin like he's torn into his own. Like her words have torn him up inside. Ragged, bleeding mess that he can't stop. Just keeps oozing out around his fingers. Drip, drip, drip down his ribs. Do you want it to stop? Do you? Do you? Do you? Did you say something? Dream asks. Head cocked to the side. And Rambu almost laughs. <laughs> Not for you. Not for anyone. No one's there that you can see. Only for me. Did you know? I see people. I see people constantly. Mine's cracked in two. In ten. In a thousand. Never been right. Should have never lived. Rolls his head back and regards him through a slitted eye. No. There is nothing put together about him right now. Mask slipped and broken in a dozen places. No control over his face. Over anything. Probably looks absolutely insane. But Dream lets it go. Meandering down the hallways of HQ with his hands tucked in his pockets. Asks in such an off-handed manner, it's clearly very intentional. What happened to your hands? They okay? Boots scraping against worn floorboards. Freezing cold snap of teleportation ripping you out of existence. The fuck are you doing in here? They'd laughed. Nasty sound of it echoing in the small bar. Claws digging in sharply to legs. Murder in your head as they lean over the table. Body under you, shuddering violently as you hit them and hit them and hit them. And Rambu flexes his fingers out of habit. Joints stiff and knuckles swollen. Split open like the line in his lip. Yeah. Rough mission? Far from the hive, aren't you, Drone? Hand on his shoulder, antenna shying away, shrinking into himself. Incoherent screaming and ice in your veins. Duck, weave, dodge. Blood in your mouth, on your fists, on their faces, under your claws. Rambu dips his head down low, watching the floor pass under bare feet, but it shifts into worn floorboards, dirtied with blood. Black and red and blue. More on your broken-up knuckles. A face smashed into something unrecognizable. Hands yanking you back roughly. Sure. Wanna talk about it? You're going to kill them. You're going to kill them. Rip them into a hundred pieces. Hurt them like he hurts. Like his people hurt. Like you hurt. Maybe it'll stop. Maybe you'll get rid of the thing that strangles you from the inside out. Dry throat and shaking hands. Fingers aching and burning with the need to tear into something. And he worries at the medical tape wrapped around his wrists. Remember the way he looked at you after? Never forget. The horror. The fear. The lack of recognition like he doesn't know you. There's nothing to talk about. Rambu whispers hoarsely. Keeping his eyes trained forwards, but it won't leave his head. Scared. Scared. He was scared of you. It isn't your blood on your face, or in your mouth. Who are you? His eyes ask. Can't fight the itching in his hands anymore. Runs the razor-sharp edge of a claw under the tape and draws a new line open. This is a new thing. Always accidental in the past. Was it, though? Knew what you were doing and did it anyway, just like every person you've ever hurt. But now it's intentional. Claws seeking out skin because it makes him feel something. Because it hurts. Because he deserves it. Because it's something to do. Because he doesn't know why. Because he doesn't know anything anymore. They're never deep. But they could be. Could go all the way. Down to your arteries and veins could be your way out. Crisscross his arms in lazy patterns that Rambu drags into existence the few minutes Tubbo will ever leave him alone. Stays practically glued to his side any other time. The both of them wasting away at HQ because Rambu's a lunatic and can't be trusted on his own anymore. Reshcheska was the nail in the coffin. Metaphorical, wish it was literal. Dull thud sentencing you away for eternity. Finally over. Finally done. Finally buried. The last mission after Bus, Screaming incoherently. Vile words going to kill him. It's you. Abuser, it's you. Abuser, it's you! Bosnor. Incident in the bar, forcing Techno to ground them both under the guise of mental health leave. They couldn't fly. Couldn't take missions. Couldn't leave. Sentenced here to die. And after that, 
there stopped being a point to getting out of bed. Ronvu kept laying there in the hopes that it'd drive Tubbo insane, that he'd finally give in, go find another partner, see how worthless you are, pointy nails digging into his face, forcing him to meet his hideous eyes. Nothing worthwhile in you. But he didn't. Hasn't. 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 Not yet. Not yet. Still could, probably. Will eventually realize. Will leave you. But he hasn't yet. Dotes on Ronbu like it matters. Like it's going to change anything. Somehow convince him he's worth something. But Tubbo's always been prone to ideals, and this is no different. Whatever he sees in Ronbu isn't there. Nothing is. And he wants him to realize that. To move on with his life. Forget about Ronbu, like everyone else always has. What a shame. What a shame. He's got such a tight grip on you. Hard to get away, isn't it? Resha hums sympathetically. And she's been more understanding lately. Hovers over Ronbu and tells him she understands. Knows that he's tired and drained and over everything. Just wants what's best for him. Supports him where it matters. Hand splayed out on his back. One shove, that's all he needs. Her claws curl tighter. Silky strands of hair drifting down over his shoulders. Brushing against his neck as she leans closer, whispering in his ear. Of course, dear brother. Of course. Always here for you. Always going to support you. And a suggestion, if I can? Since you can't get rid of him, maybe take him over the side with you. Ronbu whirls around. Hand lashing forward, ready to gouge eyes out. Because no, never, never that. How dare she? How dare anyone, not him, anyone but him? Swears he sees a slitted green gaze for an instant. But there's nothing there. It's just an empty hallway. Shrieking laughter fading in his ears. Replaced with the frenetic drumming of his own heart. And shaky, furious panting. Jerks to look over his shoulder, hearing, Uh, everything okay? No, no, nothing is. Never has been. Cracks so deep, nothing can make it better. Like a planet rent in half. Unsurvivable, uninhabitable, unworthy. And Dream sounds concerned. Never changing smile on his face, but his posture is stiff. Worried, unsettled, distressed. That's the only way people will look at Ronbu anymore. Like they can all see. All see how wrong everything is about him. Drives him mad. Stop looking at me like that. And he hunches over, tail twitching behind him angrily, words low and seething. The fuck do you care for? Dream doesn't rear back at his tone. Can't look startled with that blank face of his, but nothing changes about his posture. Worried, sure, but overall calm standing there, like he's unmovable. Like when you come screaming at him in the gym. And Rambu's shoulders twitch when he says, I care because I'm your friend. Sure, sure, talk about me behind my back, don't you? Only looking for what I can do for you. Joke's on you, I'm not good for anything anymore. I worry about you? Liar, 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 liar. No, you don't. No one does. How could you? How could anyone? Miserable, worthless, pathetic thing. Nothing here. Because I know you're struggling and I want you to get better. Better? Better? Better! Don't make him laugh. There is no better. He's been trying to get better for months now, and it's not working. Rambu's either the same or worse than when he got here. Worse. 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 Almost struck him. Almost hit him. Never did that before. Who's to say it won't get worse? How much longer? How much longer? Until it's Tubbo under you, and you're beating him unrecognizable. Nervous laughter stutters out of his mouth. And Rambu trips back. Hadn't thought about that, but now it's all he can see. Worn blood, smattered floorboards, deep red, splashed everywhere. Staining his knuckles, coating his mouth, foul and metallic. Impish facial features smashed to pieces. Wide, terrified eyes staring up at him, betrayed and scared and hurt. You hurt him. You hurt him. What have you done? What did you do? What's wrong with you? Hey, 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 Rambu. Ronbu, you're okay. It's okay. Just breathe, okay? In, one, two. Out, one, two. Can you do that for me? He can't, he can't, he can't. Electricity crackles through him. 
zinging under his skin and the jolt knocks. Nightmare and terror and worst thing you did this abuser. Out of his head, but Rambu tears himself from Dream's hold, stammering. S Stop. D don't. You can't. I'll hurt you, too. No, you won't. You don't know that. Rambu shrieks, claws digging in harshly to his head, yanking and pulling at his hair. Doesn't know what else he can do to get them to see. How wrong, how broken everything about him is. Sharp edges cutting into everyone around him. Get away, get away, get away from him! Y you have no idea, no idea how many, how many people there have been. Probably not as many as I've killed. Dream says it so easily. Not uncaring, but like it's a wound that's long since closed up. Scarred over. Memory of pain lurking under his words and nothing else. Voice growing quieter, and yet clearer as he draws closer. Life is shit sometimes. Like, so actually completely fucked up. But that doesn't make us bad people. Stop it! I'm not innocent. I'm nothing like you. I did this to m myself. Rambu stresses. Points where his claws are dug in like blazing embers. But they start to unlatch. Life seeming to draw away from his limbs leaving him very aware of how exhausted he is. Existence weighs on him like nothing else ever has, and he really wants to collapse to the floor, hopes he falls straight through it and keeps going. I just... there's no one to blame but me. I had a choice. Rambu can see Dream at the corner of his vision, hovering just in front of him, but it's still a surprise as dry hands wrap around his own, Pull them gently from his head. Feels like someone punches him in the gut when Dream hushes. But you didn't have a choice. Not really. We don't get to choose how others treat us. This was done to you. It wasn't your fault. Wrong. Didn't have to let it get to you. Could have been better. Stronger. Should have known all along this isn't how to behave. This isn't right. And Rambu shakes his head frantically. Throat constricting tight, like there's a pair of hands wrapped around it, choking him out. But Dream won't let up. None of that should have ever happened to you. You didn't deserve it, do you hear me? There is nothing you could have ever done to deserve being treated like that. Huh, yes there is. He doesn't know the half of it. Resha cackles. Arms draped casually over Ronbu's shoulders, her head tipping to rest against his as she flicks a hand counting things down on her fingers. The servants you've had executed, what you did to the Manet family, all the lies you've told just to get what you want, everyone you've hurt for fun. Do you ever think, little brother, do you ever think if maybe you've driven someone over the edge, something you said that made them jump? Knife under the ribs, in his throat, punched clean out through his trachea. And Rambu tries to swallow past it. Can't and chokes on anything he could think to say, is left numb and mute and terrified, staring at Dream's simple face. Just wishing he'd leave him alone, that everyone would leave him alone. He doesn't deserve any of this. He doesn't want to feel this. He doesn't want to feel anything. But ever the bastard, Dream won't go. Drops his hands with a sigh. All right, come on. Cookie time. Dream says, Wrapping an arm around Ranbu's shoulders, displacing Resha, who goes with a snooty huff, more or less uses his grip to guide him down the hallway, but not in a controlling way, something kinder, like he's helping him find his footing. It's only slightly awkward at first. Ranbu's taller than Dream, but for a second it feels nice, like he's small and tucked away out of sight, ghost of a memory whispering through him. Cuddled into her side, Everything's okay. Nothing can get you. You're safe now. And ever so gently, he leans the barest amount into the contact. The kitchens are a seldom-used, desolate space, too small to service the syndicate as it is now, also outmoded with the addition of food replicators. So they're absolutely deserted when they walk in, and Dream flicks the lights on. He makes some off-handed comments about being lucky they have the place to themselves, 
but Rambu can see layers of dust on the counters and knows it wasn't a coincidence. Dream knew no one else would be in here, brought Ranbu here specifically because of that, and he doesn't know how to feel about it. Picks at the cuffs at his shirt, sleeves long enough to cover everything up to his wrist, but not the ugly mess the rest of his hands are. Kinda wishes they were. Is so tired of looking at medical tape stained black in spots. There's a smaller replicator in here, and Dream fiddles around with it for a few minutes, humming under his breath as Rambu slumps against some cabinets, staring off into space while it feels like his brain melts out of his ears. Eventually, though, Dream's got an array of supplies laid out in front of him. Has to needle Ranbu into moving, but he does, drifting over as Dream claps his hands together excitedly. All right, let's get started. You might want to roll your sleeves back before we start. Don't want them to get dirty. Rambu had shuffled over with enough prompting, but freezes now. Nothing subtle about it at all as he refuses to lift his head. Hands stilled over where they were going to grab a bowl of white-looking powder. Eyes locked on the end of his shirt sleeve, but nothing is visible. He made sure of it. Knows how to wrap the tape so it lies flat, wears dark colors so the blood won't show through. He knows how to do this, but then how does he know? His hands start to shake, fingers curling to self-consciously pull the fabric down a little more. Doesn't want Dream to see because he's ashamed, embarrassed, angry, scared. But it doesn't matter what he's done. It shouldn't matter. No one should care, and they don't. Forcing his limbs back into motion, Ranbu drags the bowl closer, shaking its contents around and doesn't look up as he murmurs, I'm fine. Lie. You haven't been fine in weeks. Haven't said you loved me in weeks. A tired, tear-strained voice whispers. And Rambu winces. Glad, at least, his hair shrouds his expressions from where Dream stands on his right. Some tension bleeding out of him at Dream's easygoing voice. Yeah, okay, whatever you want. I'm taking off my jacket, though. All right. Rambu mumbles, confused. Not sure why that's pertinent information. Fingers wrapped tight around the slick sides of the glass bowl. Here's the sound of rustling as Dream, presumably, shrugs his bomber off. Okay, so George gave me a rundown earlier, but I've never done this before, so bear with me. Dream laughs warmly, reaching out to grab a dish of another white, crumbly thing in front of Ronbu, rambling on about something else. But Ronbu doesn't hear it whips his head to stare after the twisted, wrinkled skin of Dream's forearm. Some of it shines strangely in the lights overhead, sections so gnarled back in on itself it looks like tree bark, spreads from the back of his hands up over his elbows, disappearing under the sleeve of his t-shirt. Burns. They're burns. His brain supplies, dazedly. Can't look away as Dream adds all the little dishes of powder to the bigger bowl. How long had they been there? What happened? When did it happen? Did he? Did someone else? And now that he's thinking about it, Rambu can't remember a single instance of seeing Dream in short-sleeved anything. Every memory he has, Dream's either in his baggy bomber or green hoodie, loose-fitting athletic shirts with sleeves he can hook a thumb through, pulling them down even further, Hiding this entire absolute mess must have been agony. And Ranbu's own arms burn faintly in phantom pains. I don't only wear long sleeves because I'm ashamed or anything. Dream begins conversationally, head tipped down to where he's working on stirring all the dry ingredients together, posture relaxed. It's kind of habit at this point. I don't have a lot of feeling in my skin anymore, so it's easier to see if I've been injured when my clothing's torn. What happened? Rambu whispers, horrified. How practical. How morbid. Fingers flitting up without much conscious thought, touching shakily at the medical tape he's been hiding from view, covering up all the thin slits in his skin. And Dream shrugs, reaching for a carton of something. That's how they would discipline us back where I used to be. Get metal rods real hot and just... He pantomimes wrapping something down on the inside of his forearm, hand then dropping to trace some of the ridges it left behind. 
it was less likely to get infected that way. Plus, it just fucking hurt. That was always a huge selling point for them. Oh, could you pass me that mixy thing? Ronbu hands over what he's pointing at in a haze. Can't stop staring. Can't stop thinking about his own. Back there. Dim lights and cracked concrete. Stained dark where they hastily mopped up his blood. Frigid burn of it sliding down his face, dripping into his eyes. Searing heat at his neck. Fingers digging into his shoulder harsh, keeping him in place. Scared. Songbird. Croaks out, desperately. I'm so sorry. Fuck. Dream. I'm... Ancients. I don't know what to say. That's okay. Thank you for sympathizing with me. Dream says softly, head turning to face him while he mixes the absolute shit out of something light yellow. And in this form, he's always smiling. But Rambu can hear the real one in his voice as he continues. There's not much else you can say, but it means a lot, knowing you're there for me, Rambu. But... Rambu tries. Knows his words fall flat in the face of this kind of monstrosity. Are weak and hollow and do nothing. But clamps his mouth shut as Dream reaches over and places a hand over one of his. I know it doesn't seem like much, but you're worried about me. Upset on my behalf. You care about me. And that's more than enough, really, it is. It goes quiet while they move through the rest of the steps. Dream, passing off the big bowl of dry ingredients to Ronbu, tells him to mix it in a cup at a time to the bowl he's working on. Doesn't say anything when, as Ronbu's reaching over, his sleeve rucks back. Pearly white bandages standing out starkly against his skin. Doesn't say anything either when he yanks it back down. Could make fun of you, and doesn't. Could mock how easily you gave in, but isn't. Could press the issue, but won't. Rambu thinks, mind turning end over end and back around, so very lost and tired. Not sure what he's doing here, watching Dream whip some confection together with his scarred hands. Rambu's own braced on the countertops and making his abused skin pull. Don't you remember anything I taught you? Only supposed to need yourself, whispers through his mind. Muffled sound of a riding crop striking a hard surface but it fades away like quieting winds of a slackening storm. Words drifting over him like slowing sand particles and not cutting deep like they can. Only rely on yourself. Can't trust anyone. Have to be alone. Can't rely on... And maybe it's pathetic and needy of him, but Rambu kind of wants someone to take his hands in theirs. Wrap his claws away and look him in the eyes and tell him to stop. To tell him that they're worried about him, that they care, that they sympathize, that they understand, that they're sorry. And he looks up, hesitantly, at where Dream's dragging a spoon through the dough. I'm embarrassed. Ronbu whispers, fingers flexing against the countertops, makes a conscious effort to keep them there and away from his arms. Newest cut, stinging sharp against his left wrist. O or ashamed, maybe. I, I don't know. I, I just... I know I'm not supposed to be doing this. It would be better if you weren't. Dream allows, slowly. Clear he's trying to pick his words carefully. Hands stilled in their mixing. Long fingers tapping around the handle of the spoon. Do you know why you're doing it? control. Ronbu says automatically, because that's what it used to be, a way to snap his head back to wherever it had gone, the pain forcing him to refocus and get everything back together, otherwise it wouldn't stop. But it changed. Somewhere along the lines, it changed. So whenever you feel a lack of control, you hurt yourself? And hearing it in such plain terms makes Ronbu's heart squeeze painfully. Automatic defenses jumping to mind, demanding to be let out. I don't mean it. I don't mean it. An accident. Not intentional. Didn't know how sharp. But they're all lies. He does mean it. It's not an accident. It is intentional. Knows exactly how sharp. How much pressure to use to break skin. 
shrugging a little helplessly. Rambu stares at his claws and feels bile taint his mouth, knowing what they've done, what they could do. Is in parts shamed that he's done this, disgusted that he hasn't finished it, angry over everything and hopelessly lost and just... Ancients, why is it always like this? Why can't he just be normal? Wets his lips and stammers. I... I think... I, I've been, um... Been... Um... Because I feel like I have to. Like if I don't do it to myself, I'll... I'll do it, um... To someone else. And for once... It feels like the truth. Terrifying and fragile and very dangerous falling out of his mouth. Could shatter apart so easily. Could shatter him apart so very easily. But gentle hands catch it. Cradle it carefully and don't try to pry for more. I'm so sorry you have to live with this fear. And I understand how much it hurts. I used to feel like that a lot too. Ronbu looks over at where Dream's fiddling around with the oven, poking at buttons while he tries to get the thing turned on. But he stops when he feels eyes on him, tips his head to the side even though he doesn't have actual eyes right now. Makes sure he's meeting Ronbu's anyway. I could tell you a million times you're not going to hurt anyone, but I know it doesn't help. At least, it didn't for me. Can't believe him. Won't believe him. Deluded. You've tricked them. Convinced them you're worth something? Anything? Manipulator, manipulator. Everything in his mind wails all the time. Like a steady wind that blows and blows and blows. Never seems to run out of the power that drives it. And Rambu hangs his head, defeated set to his shoulders as he mutters. I... I just feel like you're lying to me. I know. And I promise I'm not. I'm really, really not, Rambu but I don't know if saying that helps. Do you know if it would help if I said it more? Or would you rather me express sentiment another way? Dream asks, like these are easy questions to answer, and not basically the hardest fucking things Ronbu's ever been asked. He doesn't want Dream to express sentiment, to lie to him, but he does. He does so much, because he's not lying. He's not lying, he's not. But he is trying to manipulate him, trying to hurt him. He's not. He's not. He's genuine. Caring about him when he shouldn't. What have you ever done for him? Absolutely nothing. Only bother him with your shit. Worthless. And Rambu snarls a hand into his hair, yanking on it harshly. Just wishes things would make sense. Hey, 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 it's okay if you don't know. You don't need to beat yourself up over not having an answer. Dream hushes. And Rambu rolls his eyes hard, because that's supposed to be what he's good for. Knowing things and having answers. But he's useless like this. Doesn't serve a purpose. He's just a giant, jumbled mishmash of a person that keeps trying to self-implode, but people won't let him. And he's kind of waiting for the day either he gets lucky, or, more realistically, they get tired of stopping him. Soon. 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 Hopefully soon. The skeletons jitter from behind their unchained doors, peeking out of cracks to grin at him with macabre smiles. It's been going on for so long. You think you're tired? Think how tired they all are. Soon, soon, soon they'll stop caring, stop watching, stop listening. Just let you go like smoke escaping out of hands and lost to the night. Could you help me form the cookies? Oven should be ready soon and I need an extra set of hands. Dream's lilting words cut through the echoing voices. Needs your help. You can do that. Be of use. Wants you here for some reason. Just like, can't do this without you. Stay with me, boo. Please stay. And Rambu's hands slip limply out of his hair, hang uselessly at his sides until Dream takes one in his and gently eases it into the light brown dough. It's sticky and faintly warm under Rambu's finger pads, and he presses them experimentally into the substance, brief flicker of interest at the feeling of it moving up in between his fingers. Watches as Dream scoops up a little handful of it and rolls it in his palms, triumphantly holding a lumpy ball out towards Ronbu. Between the two of them, they get all the cookies rolled out fairly quickly, 
and Dream lets Ronbu space them out on the cookie sheet. Shaky grid overlaying the entire tray, showing him exactly how far apart to place each one so it's even. It blinks in and out of reality, Brain struggling to maintain it, but it's nice. Makes him feel more like himself. Makes him feel useful, even if it's just setting treats onto a metal tray. Would you be willing to try something with me? Dream asks, as Ronbu's finishing the second-to-last row. Flicks Dream a glance, and shrugs his shoulders. Not sure, unless he gets more information. And Dream hums like he understands. It's nothing bad. Just some coping techniques I think might help you. Coping techniques? Rambu murmurs back, setting the last cookie ball in place, and then doesn't know what to do with his hands. Presses his fingertips together to cement them with the glue-like leftover dough. Pulls them back apart with a satisfying little tugging sensation. Dream takes the finished cookie sheet and slides it into the oven, leaning against the door of it while he cleans his hands off on a spare towel. Yeah, we can start with a couple, and if they help, great. And if they don't, that's okay too. We'll figure it out. Does that sound like something you'd want to try? Rolling the greasy dough paste between his fingers, Rambu doesn't know what he wants. Accepts the towel Dream holds out for him and wipes his hands down. Stares at how nasty the medical tape around his knuckles has gotten, covered in cookie dough and old blood like it is. He's been so exhausted for weeks now. Hasn't had much interest in anything but the flicker of something. Stirs to life in his chest. Rambu clenches his fingers, winces when it pulls at his knuckles, and he's so tired of everything, but is extra tired of seeing this. Taped up bloody knuckles, bandages covering his arms, like a corpse, smell of blood and antiseptic. Looks up and asks, What would I have to do? Dream walks him through two things. First one being something he calls taking inventory, a thing he does when he's having trouble reorienting after a panic attack or nightmare. Basically works his way out from himself, asserting what's real and what's not. So I start with myself, check to make sure I don't have the shackles or the collar. Dream explains, using some ancient-looking oven mitts to pull the sheet out of the oven. Entire kitchen enveloped with the smell of sugar and butter. But then I move out from there, just like, cataloging what I see. Like, in here, it'd be cabinets, oven, cookies, fridge, replicator, things like that. And it works? Rambu asks, skeptical. Eyeing the still-hot cookies, and arguing with his brain that, no, they can't have one right now, he'll burn the shit out of his mouth. But they smell so good, just one bite, we'll be careful. And Dream shrugs tossing the mitt on the counter. It does for me. Everyone's different, though. It just helps me feel more in control of the situation. Over myself. So I thought it might help you. The second technique is harder to listen to. Makes Ronbu squirm and dart his eyes away from the black marker Dream holds out to him. Fingers all snarled up together and aching for his arms, hearing things like self-harm and cutting and intentionally hurting yourself. But his arms ache from his fingers, and Rambu's tired of it. Unlatches a trembling hand to take the marker into his own. Try and draw things instead. Whatever you like. And if it's really a pain thing, you can get an elastic and snap it against your wrist. Dream pantomimes the gesture against the gnarled skin of his own wrist, otherwise doesn't pressure Ronbu for anything else as he's splitting up the cookies into bandanas. But ideally, you want to try and move away from that. But it's like stepping stones, okay? One step at a time. One step at a time. Ronbu thinks, following along at Dream's side back to his room, marker tucked behind an ear, hot bundle of cookies cradled in his hands. One at a time, one foot in front of the other. Fingers worrying at the messy knot he made in the top. Intentionally makes them go from picking threads free to fiddling with it gently. Just letting the fabric slip between his fingertips. Small steps, but steps. You can do that. You know how to walk. Dream parts with him at his door. Bomber slung over a shoulder as he waves by. And shakily, 
Rambu goes to copy the gesture. Takes a second to breathe before going to grab his ID, only realizing then he quite literally only has the clothes on his back and a sack of cookies. Raps as gently as he can on the door without upsetting his knuckles too much. When there's no response, he shifts back and forth on his feet, worried he's going to have to knock harder so Tubbo will hear. Realizes he doesn't know where Tubbo even is, fist already part of the way down and wavering with indecision right as the door swishes open. Ranbu blinks, maybe for the first time in a long time, really registering how Tubbo looks, how exhausted he is, dark circles under his eyes, the skin around them puffy and irritated, hair an absolute rat's nest, disheveled braid sticking out weird. He looks like he hasn't slept once at all. In these few weeks, Ranbu's done nothing but sleep. Hey. Ranbu stammers, self-consciously ducking his head, feeling guilt swamp through him because he did this, made him worry, made him lose sleep. Has the sick, curling thought of dragging open new cuts in punishment. Ones that'll really hurt this time. But he sucks in a trembling inhale lets it out, and imagines that thought going along with it. Not doing that. I'm holding the cookies. Can't let them go to get at my arms. I'd drop them on the floor then. Dream worked hard on these, so I'm not doing that. Holds the bandana out to Tubbo in both hands, looks up through his hair, and offers, soft and unsure. I, I made cookie... The end of his sentence gets cut off in a weird, high-pitched wheeze, punched out of him with how hard Tubbo hugs him. Arms encircling him like a vice. Wings flared open behind him as he buries his head under Ranbu's chin, thoroughly smashing the cookies. He's mumbling something from where his face is pressed into Ranbu's collarbones, too low and indistinct for most people. But Ranbu leans down, ears flicking as he finally picks up. Love you, love you, love you, love you, love you, love you keening in the back of his throat. Ronbu wiggles closer, rubbing his cheek into the top of Tebo's head, works his arms free, even though it hurts, and snakes them around Tebo, one hand coming up to cup the back of his head as he hoarsely whispers, Sorry, so sorry. Love you too, Helen. I'm so sorry. Fuck! It's okay, Boo. Stalidore, Queen's Fuck, I love you. Love you so much. Don't ever forget that, okay? Tubbo hiccups. Tears burning where they leak through Ranbu's shirt. And it stings, but it's completely overshadowed by how warm he feels right now. Feeling bleeding back into him where Tubbo's touching. Like his entire body's been asleep and is only just now waking up. They eventually shuffle back into their room. Tubbo with two arms still looped around Ranbu's waist, fire-bright fingers splayed out over his side. And Ranbu's realizing a lot of things, stepping into their dorm with clear eyes. It's like he's come out of a nightmare, a fever dream, seeing everything for how it really is, how trashed their room is, dirty clothes and takeout containers piled up, neither bed made, how disgusting he feels. Hair hanging limp and tangled in his face. Worryingly, can't remember the last time he showered was. Tubbo looked surprised and then heart-achingly relieved when Rambu says he's going to go get cleaned up. Follows along after him to the showers, probably because he could use one as well, but mostly because he won't leave Rambu alone, and that's for the best. Rambu needs that right now. He's still trying to decide if that's okay or not while scrubbing the grime out of his hair in the sonic shower, mind darting back and forth in between, don't deserve it, didn't want to stay, don't make him hold on, and the look on his face when you walked up, feeling of him in your arms, ancients, how could you forget? How did you ever forget him? Fingers fiddling around with the almost completely undone braid, the one he hasn't bothered asking Tubbo to touch for weeks now, Rambu slowly works his mother's bead free and untangles it, makes sure it gets cleaned as well. After hair comes hands, 
and it's easier undoing the nasty medical tape around his knuckles. Check the wounds to make sure they're healing okay, and dab antibiotic ointment over them. But it's another thing entirely, undoing the ones on his arms. The bandages span from his wrists up to his elbows, and Rambu doesn't want to do this, but he can't remember how he's been taking care of them, if he has. And it's so unsettling to not know things that it prompts him to do it, unwinding the tape to reveal the whole ugly mess. Razor-thin lines crisscross his forearms in a jumble, a lot of them inflamed and flushed dark purple-black around the edges, all of it in desperate need of antibiotic ointment and a chance to breathe. And the first task is easy, super simple, doable, but not the second. Fear and worry and panic and judgment and people will see, they'll know what you do, how broken you are, resorted to this because your head's so wrong. Running careful fingertips down his arms, Rambu hates the way it feels, skin all raised and bumpy and gnarled, recoils at the sensation, panic flaring in his chest because what if it doesn't go back down? He did way more and way worse than he ever has before. What if it's always like this? But then a light voice curls through the anxiety. I'm not ashamed or anything. And he remembers Dream, with his horrible scars and the easy smile in his voice, arm around his shoulders, dragging him in, making him feel safe. No judgment, and one step at a time. And Rambu takes a deep breath, lets it out, and it shakes, but that's okay. He's going to be okay. Slipping his clean shirt on, Rambu tugs the sleeves down out of habit before leaving the shower stall, throwing away the wadded-up ball of medical tape on his way out, meets Tubbo in the main part of the bathroom. He's fiddling with his handheld, probably messaging his old friend from the academy, Tommy Innit, recently twenty, lieutenant in the Imperial Sunfleet, loudest person you've ever heard, but pockets it as soon as Rambu walks up, smiles at him a bit hesitantly, unsure, shape of it broadening into something more real when Rambu offers him a timid smile of his own. It's on the way back to their room that Rambu knows what he needs to do, crosses the threshold with trepidation and anxiety burning in his gut, but he knows what he needs to do. He's got to roll his sleeves up. He needs to let the cuts breathe. He has to tell Tubbo what he's been doing if he hasn't already figured it out for himself. And doing that is a bit like unwinding medical tape. Scary and terrifying to reveal everything. But nothing will heal right if he doesn't. And Rambu has to start somewhere. Gets Tubbo's attention with a quiet, Hey, I, um, I, I need to ask for a, a favor. Of course, Boo, anything you need, Tubbo says, setting his caddy of shower supplies down and immediately comes back to stand in front of him. And it's a lot, having him right there. But Rambu drops his eyes, fingers latched desperately on the cuff of his shirt. You can do this. You can do this one step at a time. Dream wasn't scared, and you shouldn't be either. Slowly works the fabric back. I, I need... Um, I... Uh, I need you to, um... Keep an eye on me. There's no sharp intake of breath, no gasp of surprise, of horror, no screaming, no crying, no laughing. Just two warm fingers hesitantly spreading out over his skin, stopping just at the edge of where the abuse begins, touch gentle and loving as they caress the insides of his wrist, summer soft voice murmuring, Of course, Stelle, I got your back, okay? You're not alone, remember? Remember what I promised you? Sitting on the edge of the Asachi's ramp, quick, fast, panicked, packed bags sitting behind you, wondering where he is, if you made the right choice. Terrified it's too late, but then too many things on your chest, seeing how he runs to you, disbelief and joy on his face. Hears the words in his mind, but wants something more real to hang on to. Wets his lips and pleads, I do, but tell me again. 
I'm never leaving you. You don't have to be alone ever again, Tabo says. And it's not word for word the same, but the feeling that soaks through is tender and honest and adoring. Gets Rambu to lift his head to make eye contact, left speechless at the fierce light in Tabo's eyes. Reminds him of seeing solar flares snap and curl off stars. Raw power and absolute beauty in a single entity. Thank you. Rambu whispers, shifting his hand to actually hold Tubbo's own, tail wagging gently, feeling the way their fingers slot together. Like Rambu's found some piece he didn't know he'd been missing. And Tubbo looks up at him, love so very painfully obvious in every line of his face as he smiles. Anything, anytime, Ronbu. I mean it. Whatever you need, just ask. It's very obvious, all of a sudden, how bereft he feels without his braid. And it's probably a placebo effect. It really doesn't weigh much, nor is it super intrusive. But it's strange, having all of his hair unbound. Just ask. Just ask. Just ask. He's your husband. Just ask. Don't deserve him. Shouldn't want me. But he does. He stayed. He cares about you. He loves you. Just ask. And taking his unoccupied hand, Rambu fishes the caryad bead out of his pocket. There's some part of his mind, needling at him, that he isn't worthy to be called Tubbo's husband. Should just leave the braid out, not bring it up again. Let him forget. But there's a hand in his, and starlight eyes looking at him because they love him. And no one else. Him. Ronbu. With his busted head and torn up arms. And he rolls the bead around between his fingers before holding it out for Tubbo. Would you mind rebraiding my hair? Tubbo blinks and then smiles, one hand coming up to gently take the bead, another reaching out to adoringly brush hair behind his ear, eyes crinkling at the corners when Rambu shivers, chasing after his touch like he hasn't felt it in years. Not at all. Come here, come sit with me, Stelle. And as Rambu's sitting on the floor with Tubbo behind him, combing myrrh oil through his hair before doing his braid, gets caught up and loses whole sections of time where Tubbo's just scratching along his scalp, when Rambu's sitting behind him, devotedly doing the same. He feels like he's finally woken up from a long, arduous nightmare, curls around Tubbo and tucks their heads together, doesn't ever want to go back. <laughs>